on, Samuel, we haven't got all day, called Jack. You're going to have to drive a little faster than you did on the way here. Why all the rush? asked Samuel. We've got plenty of time. I don't want to miss the train, urged Jack, reaching over to honk the horn to signal the children to come outside. Samuel and Jack were taking Amy and Ethan to New York City for the day. They were going to park at the train station and take the train into the city. The day would be feel filled with a boat tour around Manhattan, followed by a concert and dinner. They're here, cried Ethan from the doorway. The children ran excitedly toward the car, waving goodbye to Alfie and their mom and dad. Alfie barked excitedly in response. Alfie, behave yourself and don't bark all day at the squirrels, called Samuel. Ha, laughed Jack. His bark is worse than his bite. You mean like yours, quipped Samuel. Ha <laughs> ha, said Jack dryly. They arrived and made their way to the platform, where the train was already waiting. The four travelers boarded the train and went in search of four seats together. Moments later, their train pulled out of the station. You see, exclaimed Jack, we just made it in time. Images of the leafy countryside and the sparkling Hudson River flashed past. The children talked excitedly about the sights they would see and the food they would eat in New York City. After a while, they sat back in their seats and admired the view. Samuel had brought his new cane with him. And while his new glasses had improved his vision to some extent, Walking with a cane helped him to feel even more secure. Granddad, said Ethan, do you like the sound of the train? I really, really like it. It makes me feel as if we are going on a real adventure. We are going on a real adventure, Samuel replied. Did you know that sound travels in sound waves just as light travels in light waves? Samuel asked. Now, hold on a minute, yelled Jack. You are a wonderful painter, Samuel, and you have taught us all you know about light. You have explained to us how it helps you create beautiful images. But I do declare, Samuel, you are not going to lecture us about sound. If anyone is going to do that, it should be me, Jack Audier. I don't think I've taught you anything. Everything I know about light, retorted Samuel. But if you want to tell us some interesting facts about sound, then please do. I would love to hear what you have to say. After all, you are a talented musician and have spent your life dedicated to music. Flattery will get you nowhere, Samuel Van Lumen, yelled Jack, continuing the conversation. Did you know that our ears, the receptors of sound, are usually self-cleaning? Said an animated Jack. Oh, that's just plain gross, exclaimed Amy. Okay, well, how about this, continued Jack. Your ears don't stop working even when you are asleep. Your brain shuts out noises. Well, as much as it possibly can. Jack? Is that really true? Asked Ethan quizzically. Sure it is, Jack replied confidently. That's why alarm clocks work, if they're loud enough. Oh, look at the horses, exclaimed Amy excitedly. They're galloping. All right, kiddos, I think we should all sit back and relax. When you are in the city, I will share my knowledge and wisdom with you whether you like it or not. In the meantime, enjoy the view. With that, Jack back, sat back and stared contentedly out of the train window. It was well over two hours before they reached their destination. As the four disembarked the train and made their way out of the train station, a cacophony of city sounds rose up into the morning air People were shouting, horns were honking, 
and traffic was moving in all directions. It's so noisy, screeched Ethan. Ethan, hold Jack's hand, please, instructed Amuel. Amy, give me your arm. Together, the four made their way toward a row of bright yellow taxicabs parked in front of the train station. Moments later, they were sitting inside one of the cabs on their way to the city harbor. There, they would take a boat ride out around the island of Manhattan. The children stared out of the taxi windows at the hustle and bustle of the city. Sunlight glimmered and shined on the windows that adorned or decorated the high-rise buildings. As the cab moved through the congested city streets, they were engulfed by what felt like a wave of sound and music. As you can tell, said Jack enthusiastically, looking at the children's amazed expressions. Even if you couldn't see the city, you sure can hear it. But do you know what sound is and how it travels, he asked. Not really, Amy replied. Ethan simply shook his head. At that moment, their cab came to a stop again. It was in a long line of cars trying to turn left, but nothing was moving. Jack took this opportunity to talk to the children. Well, just like light, sound is a form of energy, Jack continued. There are many, many different kinds of sounds. All sound is made by the movement of objects. That movement is called vibration. When you pluck a guitar string, the string vibrates or moves back and forth. The vibration makes the air shake. The air shakes because tiny particles in the air have been disturbed by the vibration. Those vibrations are called sound waves, said Jack authoritatively. That's cool, said Ethan, who was listening intently. So just as light enters our eyes in light waves, the sound of the horns, people, and cars rushing by enter our ears in sound waves, he offered. Exactly, said Jack cheerfully. Sound waves move outward from a vibrating object, kind of like ripples of water. Just like light, sound waves can travel through solids, liquids, and gases. Sometimes we can feel very strong vibrations through solid objects, like the ground or the hard floor of a building. Interestingly, though, continued Jack enthusiastically, sound waves cannot travel through space. Why not? asked Amy. Well, unlike light, sound cannot travel through space because it is quite nearly a vacuum. There are almost no particles to disturb in the vacuum of space. For example, think about a rocket that can be seen shooting through space. You might be able to see it, but it simply cannot be heard, Jack explained. Wow, pondered Ethan. It's strange that something that is so loud on Earth would be silent in space. Jack added, light waves travel better when there are fewer particles, and sound waves travel better when there are more particles. The very fact that space is a vacuum is what allows light waves to travel so quickly through it. On the other hand, the vacuum of space doesn't allow sound to travel through it at all. Suddenly, Samuel announced, We're here! Samuel paid the taxicab driver, and the four travelers made their way towards the big sign that said, Harbor Tours. Before long, they were on board a tour boat and were busily munching on hot dogs, pizza, and pretzels. As they gazed out into the harbor filled with a variety of boats, the warm breeze ruffled Ethan's hair. This is so cool, Granddad, exclaimed Ethan excitedly. I can't wait for the boat to start moving. I hope you've brought your sea legs, said Jack as he devoured a salted pretzel. Oh, 
And before I forget, you should also know, Jack continued, that sound waves travel much more slowly than light waves do. Sound waves travel at a different speed, depending on the medium through which the vibrations are traveling, whether it's a solid, a liquid, or a gas. Sound waves travel fastest through solids. Oh, said Amy. That is the opposite of light waves, which travel fastest through a vacuum. Samuel smiled at her keen observation. The captain of the boat tooted the horn and announced that they were about to set off on a tour around Manhattan. And another thing, said Jack. On a warm day like today, the sound of the horn travels faster than it would on a cold day. Do you know why? Amy and Ethan shrugged. When it's warm, the particles in the air vibrate faster, which causes the sound waves to travel faster. Awesome, said Ethan as he stared up at the large horn. As the boat movement moved away from its mooring, the captain tooted the horn again. Ethan listened to the sound of the horn as it seemed to be carried away by the wind and thought long and hard about the things Jack had just explained to him about sound. 